Howdy y'all, welcome back to Little Bits. Today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about these two very similar and highly compatible with each other computers. This is the SC792 build, and this is the SC794 build. Now these are beyond the base builds. I have extended them. You see they are made up of many cards. In fact, I have an I2C controller module coming in for this device, and I already have one installed on this device. Those are not part of the base builds. I'll show you a little bit about the, um, the product pages and the documentation pages for these builds. Now, one thing I'd like to emphasize here is that the number system I'm using, the SC792 and the SC794, those numbers represent a base build of a certain computer type and they're made up of specific components and each of those components also have their own numbers so you see here we have the sc 727 real-time clock module for example and we have the sc 717 rc bus pio this actually isn't part of the base build that's that's one of the extended modules so uh, i'll give you a little more information on what exactly entails the computers and what i have extended on these beyond the capacity. Now you'll notice this one, the 794 has a VGA terminal. Now this is from the original creator of the RC2014 computer. And it is a Raspberry Pi Pico 2040 based uh, VGA and um, keyboard terminal so it intercepts the UART signal and allows it to display to a VGA and allows it to intake uh, keyboards and one of the cool things about this is that it also has an SD card slot which I have not learned to use yet and don't really need but might might try to figure out later on um, these jumpers allow you to change how it intercepts the UART signal and these buttons can do things that my particular build is not uh, capable of. This uses a software called PicoCom. Mostly today I want to show you guys and gals and everyone in between that uh, these computers, uh, they're very similar but one uses a uh, Z80 processor and one uses a Z180 processor and I kind of want to show you some comparisons of them doing you know, speed tests of, of the same tasks and stuff. And I really want to showcase today the advanced features of ROM WBW. Um, now let's take a look at this, this one here. This is our 792. I just want to get y'all a closer look at it because uh, it's a nice board, a nice collection. Well, it put a I2C module here, and then we have a space for something else. I might add one of these terminals to it so that each one has its own VGA terminal. Uh, this one has quite a few features um, beyond. It has a PIO. It already has an I2C module. Um, it has an SIO. For this one, the S the serial UART is built into the Z180 itself. So you get what's called an ASCI, I believe. It's it's like ASCII or something, which is confusing because it's not the same as ASCII, the text format. But um, you get a universal serial module with two, with two outputs built into the chip here. And you'll see that the performance difference on these systems is pretty significant, especially when you realize that this one can overclock itself. It has a what is described in the documentation is a clock divider, but that divider can also multiply. So you can put in a signal into the clock, a certain clock signal at a certain megahertz, and then you can multiply it by two and get twice the speeds. And we use that a lot. And it's it's available in ROM WBW out of box, and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk today about ZPM3, which is a CPM3 base rendition, or more accurately, it's a Z-System 
built to be compatible with CPM3's style of memory paging. And so you are able to get the same kind of memory paging with CPM3, except it also supports a lot of the stuff that Z system does, which includes things like pathing so that it can automatically find executables in a certain path without you having to specify the exact location of the executable or time support, time stamp support for, for both files and uh, for just reading the date, reading the time and displaying it to you. In fact, ZPM3 by default will show you the time as part of its regular terminal, which is a really nice feature that we'll show off today. So I'll get into that on the host system side. I'll do some screen capturing here shortly. And I'm gonna break this video up into a couple parts. So first I'm gonna show you kind of these systems, uh, what they're comprised of. Um, we're not gonna get too deep into the additional boards. I've already kind of discussed them enough. We're just gonna talk about the, the modules that build up the base SC-792 and SC-794 and uh, where you can get them and, and how you can build them and stuff. And um, then we'll really dive deep into the uh, ROM WBW source code and take a look at where kind of the advanced features live and how to utilize them. And then we'll do a separate section and that section will be non-narrated. Instead, I'll just put some music backing to it and I'll do a terminal session of just installing ZPM3 and getting it set up for use. We'll do, we'll do some ZPM3 stuff on a, a terminal session and you can follow along if you don't want to watch me do all that stuff. I'll try to cover everything you need to do you need to know to do it on your own in the, in the first part where we're just kind of stepping through the code and how to, how to work with it. Um, and then you can kind of run from there. But if you want a little more help, there'll be a second section where you can watch me perform terminal operations and you can kind of follow along or you could do your own thing. You can just watch if you, if you want to see how ZPM3 works and how you can use it. Uh, we'll do some software building stuff. That'll be, that'll be fun, that's a lot of fun. So uh, once you know how to do software building stuff, you know how to write your own software for these platforms. And a lot of the fun for me with these is writing code natively on the system. Like a lot of the firmware that we build with, ROM WBW being an example, we build it on the host platform and then we flash it to the ROM and then we do stuff with it. But once it's on there, we can write software on it and build software on it using the conventions of its time and really get a deep understanding of the history of programming. A lot of us in the modern era, we don't really have a deep understanding of what it was like to code on systems that don't have a protected user mode, for example, and highly abstracted operating systems. And so when you start to dive into this, you really get a sense of where a lot of the conventions come from. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and start the the screen capture section. I just wanted to get y'all a good look at these systems because they're very, very impressive to look upon. They were a lot of fun to build and they're a lot of fun to work with. This is kind of my ultimate Z80 build system. I got the biggest backplane I could and it's actually extensible. I can add a, another backplane on either side if I really want to, but it's already pretty bulky and it still has two open slots to work with, which I don't even know what I want to put here. I'll probably put a sound card at some point, but that's very low priority. And I may put uh, something else cool here. I don't, I don't know. There's plenty of cool stuff to put there. Uh, and the, the cool thing about them is you can swap them out. Although sometimes I do have issues with when I have a lot of boards in a, in a backplane, if you put boards in the wrong order, sometimes it'll have trouble booting. It'll try to initialize something here. It'll try to initialize something there and it just won't get anywhere. But swapping swapping them out because the backplanes actually have a priority order. There's a little mark down there somewhere that tells you uh, things going this direction are lower priority and things closer to this side are higher priority in the interrupt chain. Although, these jumpers are used to set up the interrupt chaining 
And right now I don't really have interrupt chaining set up. So um, there's kind of a lot to, to learn about that. Uh, I don't really understand interrupts very well yet, which is a shame because they're extremely important <laughs> to coding effectively on any platform. All right, well, we'll get started. Thanks for watching and I hope y'all enjoy. All right, so let's take a look at the documentation pages for these two computer systems. Here is the SC794, and it is the latest design from Small Computer Central. You'll see that it's made up of several different components. Here's our parts list here. We've got a backplane, and when you purchase this thing, you can select between different backplanes. If you get a black backplane that doesn't have a built-in power supply you it will automatically come with a module power supply and you get you can select what kind of which pairings you want so you can build this with this little five plus one or six plus one slot back plane that has its power supply built in which is the default or you can customize the purchase such that you get a different back plane a different power supply and you know those there's different costs associated with that now um the other computer we're looking at is very very similar you can see it uses the exact same backplane in fact this is the backplane we are using with our uh sc792 and it also can support an sd card it supports sd cards it supports compact flash cards also called cf cards and um, it can it can use both and some of the advanced features we'll be looking at today involve allocating space to cpm slices uh, we've talked about the fat file system partition before but we'll probably talk a little bit about that today as well and um, just how we can customize the system to use specific portions of me of uh, disk memory and we can do that on both these systems now this system does not currently support an sd card uh, at least for block storage it does the one i have has an sd card on the vga terminal module but that connects to the rp 2040 microcontroller rather than directly to the backplanes bus system so we can't use it quite the same way as we can use this this supports sd cards because out of box the z180 has spy support spi protocol so that way we can just talk to sd cards because they typically use the spi protocol this particular computer only consists of three modules the back plane a memory module and the cpu itself so we have quite a bit more than that we also have the real-time clock we also have the the PIO module, the parallel I/O module, which more or less gives us uh, two eight-bit GPIOs. It gives us sixteen GPIOs uh, to work with, and um, we can connect it to any sort of thing and arbitrarily bit bang a protocol to work with various various uh, peripherals. And I'll be using that to run a an LCD screen in future videos and articles, but we're not going to mess with that today. Um, of course, I also have the I Square C module on the way, and I have the I have similar build here. I have the lights and switches module. I have the, or rather, the lights, the input output LED module, and then I have the another PIO. I have uh, the I Square C already installed on this one. I have the VGA terminal, which we'll use to film the, the terminal session today. Uh, of course, the SIO. The SIO is an important part of the 7.9. You can see that we have the backplane. We have the CPU plus memory management unit. The, we have the memory module itself, and we have the SIO. The SIO is how we get serial, because unlike the Z180, the Z80 does not have built-in UART. Now there are renditions of the Z80 that are microcontroller modules that do include peripherals uh, such as SIO, but um, those are also end of life. And unfortunately, Z80 is end of life. Z180 is end of life as of this year. And um, fortunately, the community is uh, taking over the architecture, and they were kind of ready from day one to 
to start building community created Z80s and, and that's that's in progress right now. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to get a couple of those chips early on and, and do some testing with all my machines and, and be able to confirm that they work correctly so that we can we can move forward and start producing them as a community in the open source space uh, and mass. And yeah, that's a little aside. Uh, now that we've seen what these computers are made of, uh, we'll, I also have the real-time clock module on this one as well, which will be useful for ZPM. We can look at the ROM WBW source code. Now this is the root directory of the ROM WBW Git repository which you can find on GitHub. And the remote looks like this. Of course, I'm using SSH to pull it down, but if you wanted to get it without needing to install a key, you would do git clone That should do it for you. But I use the SSH keys, which means I want to add my SSH key to the chain. I can pull the latest updates, which I'm already up to date, so I don't need to worry about that. Now, if we look at the binary directory, this is where a lot of stuff is gonna show up for us once we run the build. And you'll notice that this, this uh, repository contains .cmd files as well as a make file. So you can build this source code on a Windows system just as easily as you can build it on a Linux system. Although I have not done that myself. I, I primarily use Windows for gaming and uh, certain development tools that simply don't run on Linux. And um, I mostly use Linux as my, as my primary workstation. So we have a make file, or no, let's look at the source. So we wanna look at the source code, the source directory rather. And you can see we have a lot of stuff in here. We have more build commands, which the upper level build command will likely call. We have more make files, which the upper level make file does call. Um, there's more make files in these directories as well, but you can see we have different operating system builds that are gonna attempt to be built. Uh, ZPM3 is the one we're gonna focus on today, but ZS-DOS is another operating system you could try. ZCPR, ZCPR-DJ, I believe these three, these, these, this whole section are kind of related to each other, uh, but I'm not exactly sure how they're related to each other or how much. Um, the HBIOS, this is one of the most important parts of ROM WBW. The H BIOS is the hardware BIOS essentially. And while the traditional CPM implements its hardware BIOS in their C BIOS file, the C BIOS file largely interacts with the H BIOS in order to implement the C BIOS. So there's sort of two levels of of hardware driver going on in, in ROM WBW. The H BIOS is the lowest level abstraction of hardware to software. And the C BIOS is, is a slightly higher level abstraction that calls H BIOS functions in order to implement C BIOS functions. Beyond that, C BIOS works exactly as expected. It gives you all the same CPM 2.2 API calls that you would expect, or what they call BDOS calls, rather. Uh, we don't call them API calls this early on in computing history, but that's essentially what they are. And we can we can do a lot with this. Now, now when we build ROM WBW, we're gonna get our output in this binary directory. And you can see there's already locations ready for ZPM3, CPM3, CPNet. Uh, there's no installable code in there yet. It's mostly the make files, the documentation, the licensing, etc. And a clean command. Um, but when we run make, and this will take a little while, because 
even though this computer is quite fast, the ROM WBW software does not build effectively correctly at all. It will error if you fork the build. So you really just want one thread compiling this thing. And so it's a little slow even on a modern computer, at least by, by our standards. But it's extraordinarily quick if you think about the fact that uh, it's building an entire suite of operating systems. So we'll make it, and at one point during this make process, it's going to ask us for the platform and the specific computer we wanna build for. Now, a lot of the advanced operating systems we can work with, such as ZPM3, they're being built now. They don't really need to know much about the exact platform we're working on because they are written for the higher level C BIOS, right? Or they include their own version of a BIOS that, that handles talking to the H BIOS. And the H BIOS really needs to be aware of the specifics of the platform. So it's before it even asks us what platform it needs, it builds out a suite of operating systems and CPM software tools and even games. Now, one of the ways it handles that is by creating prepared disk images, and you can see them here. These disk images can be directly burnt onto a, a compact flash card, or for these instances, floppy disks, or onto an SD card. Uh, all of all of this, both of the systems I'm using are only compatible with these HD. 512 builds so this is a suite of binaries that we can pre-install and then either boot into or just use for example here's the high-tech c tool chain now i'm not going to use this because i already have the high-tech c tool chain prepared for installation on any cpm compatible system and we'll do that as part of the terminal session later uh, you can see here it's asking us for the platform. Now we know that we're going to use a standard RCZ80 platform for our SC794. It's asking us for the exact config. In this case, we're going to use standard. I happen to know this because I've worked deeply with this code base. And so I know that this is what I need for my platform. If you have something different and you're unsure what to pick, feel free to contact me comment on the video I can help you figure out what you need all right and that part was quick so it's kind of just uh, building the last bit of configuration into the H BIOS and then creating the final binaries now if we look in the binary directory we see there's quite a bit of stuff for example those prepared hard disk images we can also look in CPM 3 There we go. And you can see we have all the files necessary here to install CPM3 from a running CPM system using the syscopy command. But also, we have the same thing prepared right here. Instead of doing it manually, we could install this image and it has everything installed on it. Uh, here's a CPM 2.2, that way you don't have to install it manually. Um, and by manually, I mean logging into C to a running CPM, running syscopy, and then whatever drive you want to install it to equals CPM loader dot sys for a CPM three, for example, or just CPM dot sys for a CPM two, for example, which is typically how I do the installations. Uh, Embarrassingly, I have only just recently discovered these disk images and that CPM3 is already pre-built for, for you during the build process and that you can install that and run it easily. Now, it's very easy to build this stuff. You don't even have to, to make any changes. If you need to do any customization though, you wanna look in CD source, HBIOS, and then you can see we have a suite of config underscore platform. These configs provide all the configuration possible, at least supported, 
for any given platform. We have SCZ180, for example. We have RCZ80, for example. So these are the platforms. This is the platform we just built for. But then if we dig deeper into the config directory, we can see that these platforms have multiple configurations available. And that's what we selected. We select When we selected standard, we selected RCZ80 standard. So this is the config we just built HBIOS to be com compliant with. And here we can see the settings for our system. Right Now, the CPU oscillator is expected to be this, but you'll find that I have overclocked the system a little bit. The Z80 based system we'll be working with today has a slightly overclocked CPU, but you can change these values to whatever you need. And if values are missing, you can get them from the platform's config file. Now we want to build another one for also the Z80 platform make, the Z180 platform I mean. So we'll just run another make. Now as long as we don't run make clean, all the binaries we've already built will stay in place. Um, make typically will uh, avoid rebuilding things if it knows they're there, but you have to write the make file in a certain way to ensure that happens. In this case, it looks like a lot of stuff does get rebuilt, uh, so it still takes the same amount of time, just about. Um, but there are some things that I think it'll skip building. For example, the user bin or the user ROM dot bin file for for a custom application installation, which I am trying to use utilize to install Collapse OS onto ROM WBW. Now we want to do SCZ one eighty, and you'll see. It's, this stands for small computer. This is Steve Cousins' design. Uh, and so we want specifically SC700 STD. Now you can see we have a ROM for each of our systems. There's also this HDIAG ROM, which I have not used before, but presumably it's an HBIOS diagnostic tool of some kind uh, to make sure your HBIOS is functioning as expected. I've never needed to run it, so I haven't yet, but I'll probably see what it does sometime soon. In order to flash these onto the chips, we've covered that before, and I'm not gonna cover it because I've already flashed these onto the chips. We can use a standard ROM burning tool in order to flash them to the chips, or we can use the if we already are running a version of ROM WBW on the system, my preferred method is to use the built-in X modem flashing tool. It will up it will use X modem to upload these ROM files and then it will flash the ROM from there for you. And then you can reboot and you boot into the new ROM. Now I've done that already on my systems, but I did want to show you the build process and I really wanted to show you again this binary directory. There's a lot of advanced stuff in here that ROM WBW can do out of box that you just have to put a little extra work into in order to utilize. If you want, for example, a, an Aztec C compiler that's installed correctly, working correctly, tested, boom, it's right there. And one thing you could do is you could concatenate these images together in order to get multiple uh, multiples of them pre-installed onto onto a compact flash card or an SD card. All right, so that should cover it. If you if you have worked with ROM WBW before and you haven't found um, these things, these features that you can use, uh, I'll show you how to burn the image to an HDD and then I'll I will start the terminal session. If you already know what you're doing, you can you can cut it here, you can do what you need to do. But for anybody else who needs to know, needs to see the process, um, just keep following along, stick with the video, and I'll show you how this works. All right, so for everybody who's checking out, peace. Thanks for watching, have fun tinkering. For everybody who is gonna continue following along, 
let's look at how to actually burn these to disk. So I'm gonna just enter the binary directory and I use the DD command, right? So if we look at the DD command, which presumably stands for disk duplicate, we can see there's a lot of stuff it can do. Now I wanna, I wanna set only a few of these settings. I wanna set BS just because it, it helps me control how fast things go. 512 is the default. I actually probably will stick with the default, so I might not set this manually. Uh, I usually do um, 124 or even up, if it's a very fast media, I'll do a very large block size in bytes and it can it can really move fast. But the, the media you're writing to has to be able to keep up, otherwise you'll just kind of bog it down. Um, count is for if you wanted to have a very specific size, we're not gonna use that. But we will use OF, where we're going to write the file to we will use if the file we want to write from so let's check d message because we just plugged in our flash card we actually need sudo and we can see that we have our flash card on dev sdb so we want to do sudo dd if equals let's do the hd 512 and the reason it's HD512, I believe, is because um, it's for a hard drive and it's for a build of ROM WBW that runs on a 512 kilobyte flash ROM, which is what we're doing. That's the default size for the memory module used on both of these systems. And in fact, the same exact memory module is used on both of these systems, which is one reason they're so uh, easy to compare to one another. And we're going to do the ZPM3 image. And we're going to do OF equals dev SDB. Set status equals progress. And this is a fairly new thing DD has had for maybe three years or more, maybe five at the most, where we can type status equals progress. We, you used to have to always put it in the background and send a signal in order to see the progress. Recently, somebody added, the maintainers added this, and we can watch the progress as it goes now that was very very fast because it's only one slice in cpm terms it's one little hard drive it's the a drive in fact uh one oh one thing i wanted to show you all before we switch away uh and this is a project i'm going to be working on building out later now rom wbw does have an x modem implementation but um some versions of CPM for these systems do not, specifically those that you install through the small computer monitor application. And we'll do a future video on this when I dive a little deeper into it, but um, there is a release of MPM2, which is a multi-user revision of CPM from somebody else as a third party. It's not really CPM, it's kind of CPM compatible, and it's it's a multi-user uh, system and he has provided us with all we need to to implement mpm2 which i will do a separate video on but he's also given us some extra tools including oh it's in here inside of this zip file is what you need to install x modem from small computers monitor this file here so if you go to this directory and I will actually put a copy of this file and the file it generates on my download page but uh, we'll talk about using this on another video I just wanted to cover this real quick in case you uh, need an X modem that will work on any version of CPM and not just ROM WBW all right now we'll get to the ROM WBW showcase
Probably cut that one short, huh?
I cut that one short, huh?